you're on the air. Okay, so we're going to talk today about what we typically call in chemistry the factor label method. There's other words for it, other names for it. The factor label method is one, okay, method. It's also known as conversion factors. Maybe you've seen this in math before, I hope. Conversion factors. I think that's what Salman Khan calls it, so if you want to look up his videos on that. It's also known as dimensional analysis, and this is what your book calls it, I think, and probably what your physics teacher will call it next year, dimensional analysis. Basically, what we're doing is we're converting from one unit to another, right? That's the basic idea. Now, it's going to get a little bit more complicated than that, but this will do for now. It's not always converting between units. But for now, we're going to be converting from one unit to another. So let me just, let's look at a real basic example. Let's say I have 10 centimeters, and I want to convert that to inches. Okay, because of course we're the last country in the world that still uses the English system, but we do use the English system, so it's useful to be able to, to make these conversions, even though we're all supposed to be switched over to SI, right? Well, of course, what I need to do th uh, to do this is a conversion factor. I need an equivalency. I need to know the relationship between these two units. Turns out there are 2.54 centimeters in one inch. Now let me ask you this. Do you think, and um, do you think that this 2.54 is an exact number or that there are three significant digits in that number? Three significant digits. That is exactly what you would expect. In other words, there's no reason to believe that there would be an exact relationship between the English system and the SI system. Follow me? However, a while back, the powers that be got together and they said, from now on, one inch is exactly 2.54 centimeters. And the reason they did that was basically what they're doing is redefining the inch. They redefined the inch as 2.54 centimeters. So it provides an exact conversion between the two. So 2.54 is now exact. It wasn't before, but it now is. And how can you do that? It's not magic. It's just like I said, they just redefine the inch. All right? So we can consider this exact. And what that means is that when we're using this number, 2.54, it will not limit our sig figs to 3. So if we had more significant figures in our number in our measurement, we wouldn't be limited by that 2.54. Exact numbers, exact relationships like 100 centimeters per meter don't limit sig figs. All right, so how would we do this? Well, I think a lot of you would probably use this sort of method. You might write something like this, um, one inch over 2.54 centimeters equals something over 10 centimeters and we're solving for x right mm -hmm. how many of you might use this raise your hand yeah, and this is a good way to do it and i'll even go so far as to say if you're doing just one step a one step conversion perfectly fine right but i'm going to show you a new way to do it that's more powerful because you can put conversions together in a string a long string like a necklace and you can go from one unit to another and back and forth. It's a very powerful method, and that's what we call the factor level method or dimensional analysis. Now, realize, first of all, what do you do when you're doing this? When you're solving for x, what you're going to end up doing is taking the 10.0 centimeters, and you're going to multiply by this conversion factor. Okay? Now, this here, this fraction, is what we call a conversion factor. All right. Now my answer um, mathematically will be 10 over 2.54 be 
three. Now that's all I have for sig figs, but I'm going to carry a couple extra digits here because just in case I want to do some more calculations. Now here's my question for you at this point. And this is actually the more important question right now, and that is what units will I write on my answer? Okay. Inches. What happened to centimeters? Why don't I put those over there? Right. They got canceled out. So essentially, I canceled out my units, right? And this is why um, I like the term factor label method because you're basically you're treating the labels, you're treating the labels as factors that you can cancel or multiply or whatever, right? Meters times meters is square meters. Meters divided by meters is one. You follow me? So you can treat them as if they're factors and they're being canceled out. So this is how you start with a certain unit and you want to go to a different unit. What you do is you just select conversion factors that will cancel out the units you don't want and produce the units you do want. Now let's just stop and make a quick side note here. You all know how to punch this into your calculator, right? I would type 10. What would I type? 10 times 2.4? 2.54? 10 divided by 2.54, right? So just to make sure you're clear with that. I mean, I know you don't use fractions all the time in math anymore. Maybe you do. Do you? You guys use fractions a lot? Yeah. Yeah? I hope you do because they are loads of fun. And if you've missed them, you're going to get to see them again big time this year. It's about all we use. So 10 divided by 2.54 gives me 3.9370, all right? Now, a little bit more on units and why can we cancel units. So let's, let's ask this question because this is really at the heart of the factor label method, dimensional analysis, conversion factors, whatever you want to call it. Why can we cancel units? What's going on here? Well, I think, first of all, we have to ask, we have to ask the question first, what is a unit? And why do we care so much about them? Why will my chemistry instructor deduct points from my test answers when I don't show my units? Right? Is it just because he's cruel and he loves to deduct points from students' grades? Partly. But more importantly, we're in science here. This is a math class. What we're, what we're really trying to get at is relationships in the real world, right? So what is a unit? Well. One centimeter, one centimeter, you know, and to some degree, a unit is kind of an abstract concept, but remember what I said before about measurement. Measurement is always comparing one thing to another. Like comparing the number of sheep in a flock to the number of stones in a pile, right? In this case, a centimeter has a very specific meaning. A centimeter is right here. It's one one hundredth of the length of this stick. So I could actually substitute this, and instead of writing one centimeter, I could write one this. What is that? That is one centimeter. In fact, one centimeter really means one times that. You with me? So in other words, the unit symbol, CM, actually stands for a specific quantity. And that's not something we often think about. We think like, well, this is the quantity. And that's true, that's involved in the quantity because what it's doing is multiplying this basic quantity. One centimeter, two centimeters. If I write 10, I had 10.0 times, whoops, I just made it larger, didn't I? Times one centimeter, that's 10 centimeters. 10 of these little things, that's what we're saying. 10 of these little things. Remember the magic word of when you're doing a word problem, right? Of means multiplication. So 10 of these little things. Now, let's say I want to make the, uh, the conversion. Well, what I realize is that 2.54 of these little things called centimeters 
are the same as one of these little things called inches. Right? Now when I express it as a conversion factor, I'm doing something like this, 2.54 times one centimeter over one times one inch. Now, numerically this, this fraction right here is equal to 2.54. And the, the units would be one centimeter over one inch because I haven't been able to cancel that quantity out. It's still there. Just like a variable, it's still there. It's not a variable, but it's still there. So 2.54 Numerically, this is equal to 2.54 centimeter over inch. 2.54 times that ratio, right? Now, the weird thing is, if we think about this in terms of the real world, then in a sense, this equals 1. Because the numerator is the same thing as the denominator. It's the same amount. And that means we can treat it just like multiplying any number by 1. Now if I multiply this by 10 centimeters, I'm not going to be changing the quantity. Even though I'm changing the number, I'm not changing the quantity because this fraction has the same quantity on the top and the bottom. All right. So let's see how this looks now when I do my, my conversion. I'm going to want to flip this over. I'm going to want to invert this conversion factor. So I have 1 times 1 inch over 2.54 times 1 centimeter. Right? And now, perhaps I can more clearly see why I can cancel out those centimeters because they are like the same number. They're the same quantity. And so they cancel out. And I end up with the answer, which is 3.9370 times 3 inch times an inch. 3.9370 of those things, of those things. So I just converted one into another. Now, I hope I didn't confuse you uh, with that little explanation about units. Let me, let me give you another demonstration of the power of the factor label method and why you should convert from being a person who uses ratio and proportion like this to a person who uses the factor label method. All right? Because there's a lot, the reason I emphasize this is there's always a lot of resistance. I always get students who, right through the whole year, they will never want to use this. They'll always want to use this. So, but it's going it, to, it makes such a difference. Let me show you why. It's pretty simple in this case. We just did a simple one-step conversion. It doesn't really make much difference. But let's say you have 10 centimeters and you want to convert to miles. 10 centimeters converted to miles, a little more complicated. Try, let me see if you can stuff that into one ratio and proportion equation. You can't do it, all right? You can't do something over something equals x over something and solve that problem. If you try, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be doing some part of the calculation in your head when you try to figure out what to write in that equation. And you're going to make mistakes, so do it like this. Here's how the factor label method would, would deal with it. First of all, I've got my first step, and I'm going to use the equivalency I already know, which is 2.54 centimeters is 1 inch. Why would I do that? Because I know it's English system. Now at least I'm in the English system, right? I'm in inches, and my answer was 3.9370 inches. I need some more conversion factors, right? What do I know? now? I'm going to give you any English conversion factors you needed on a test I would give to you. I don't expect you to know the English system. I do expect you to know the metric system, not the English system. So anything within the English system or between English and metric I would give you 
the information. So I would give you this, for example, even though it's very simple. 12 inches equals one foot. I would give you that. I would give you this. 5,000, what is it? See that? Let me ask you this. Do you know the, the English system better than the metric system? No? Or just as well? It's funny because when I was in school, like middle school, they always taught us, they were teaching us the metric system, and their argument was, you need to know this because even though nobody in America uses it now, they will when you're an adult. By the time you're an adult, you won't see the English system anywhere. That's what they told us. Still here. So we still have to work with it, and it's useful to work with because we, we still see it all around. So what's my next step? I want to get rid of inches now. So what I did in this step is I got rid of centimeters, right? Now I want to get rid of inches. So I'm going to take 3.9370. 7, Notice how I'm keeping some extra digits, even though I know they're not significant. And that's inches. And I'm going to make a conversion factor out of this. Now remember, this thing can turn into two things, 12 inches over 1 foot or 1 foot over 12 inches. In this case, which one do I want to use, A or B? B, correct. So I'm going to take 12 inches, 1 foot, and it's just 3.9370 divided by 12. And that gives me 0 0.328. That's the end of my sig figs, but I'll carry a few more here. And that's feet. And we're not done yet. we got one more step, and that is 0 0.328084. Sorry, I lost my three. Feet. What's going to go on the top? Miles, good. Now make sure when you're writing miles, you write M-I, not M. M is meters, right? So miles is M-I. And is it one mile or is it 5,280 miles? On the bottom, 5,280 feet. So I'm just dividing 0.328 by 5,280. I get 6.21 times 10 to the minus 5 miles. Aiden. Yep. Well, no, then it would be MPH, right? Yeah. And actually, the better way to write that would be MI over H miles per hour. Yeah. So there it is. And I've got correct sig figs. Now, you might say, oh, hey, that's just three steps, just like it would be if I used the ratio and proportion method, and that's true. But watch this. This isn't actually how I would do it. I would write it in one beautiful string like this. Like a string of pearls. Now, you can't do that with your ratio proportion method. Now, watch what happens when I cancel. So, bam, there go centimeters, there go inches, there go feet. Miles are the only thing that remains. Typing this in my calculator, I type 10 divided by 2.54 divided by 12 divided by 5,280, right? Are you clear on that? I mean, you can know this stuff well, and if you don't know how to put it in your calculator, you're not going to get it right. Can I do that? Just keep dividing? Yes. Yes, absolutely. You don't have to write times, parentheses, 1, divided by 2.54, close parentheses, times, and so on, right? You can if you want. That would be fine. Now, any questions at this point? This, this equation right here, questions about this equation and what I did here. Do you know what I was doing with this red line, canceling those? Do you understand why that happens? Remember those symbols, CM? 
actually stands for a little length, right? One centimeter, one centimeter. 10 times one centimeter, 2.54 times one centimeter. One centimeter divided by one centimeter is one, right? So it goes away. Now, we can go further with this. We can say something like this. Um, and this is where it really gets fun. And we have to move our meter up here a little bit. Because we're starting to get into the real fun stuff. Just starting. Something We could ask a question like this. How long would it take for light to travel, uh, how far? A meter? Mm, too easy. How about, um, how about 3.25 micrometers? Now, aren't you glad I didn't throw micrometers at you? Can somebody tell me how long a micrometer is? Hundredth of a centimeter? No, Negative six. Micro is one millionth, right? One millionth. So, how long would it take light to travel 3.25 micrometers? Well, you can see right off the bat, or you can probably guess there's going to be a fair number of conversions in this. Not that many, actually. Let's add a little bit of, let's make it a little bit more fun. Um, <laughs> How long would it take light to travel? And we're going to say in years. All right? So in years, how many years, in other words, how many years would it take for light to travel 3.25 micrometers? I'm going to need a lot of relationships here, right? A lot of conversion. That's what conversion factors are. They're just relationships between units. Start with 3.25 micrometers. What do you want to convert to first? We don't have that, right? What can we do? Here's what you do, all right? Here's how you do this method. First of all, I know I want this in the denominator, right? I know that. That's a great place to start. I know I want to cancel micrometers, so that's a good place to start. What's a logical thing to put on the top? Remember, this is a relationship. Do you know any relationships involving micrometers? You could go to millimeters. It might make sense to go to meters because that's the base unit. And if you know that there's 10 to the 6 micrometers in a meter, right, then that would be a good way to do it. Now, just to reiterate, you won't be given conversions like that on the test because that's, a, that's within the SI system. So you would be expected to know, particularly micro, I mean, it's only one step away from milli. Milli is a thousandth, micro is a millionth, right? Of a meter. So micrometers, if I were to stop here, I would have meters, so I'm not done. I got to go to uh, time somehow. What is it called when you have a relationship between distance and time? Okay. A rate or, what you, would you say, a speed, right? Anybody know the speed of light? What'd you say? Not in metric. Is that a break? All right, so the speed of light, 2.998 times 10 to the per second. And we know we're going to need that at some point. And in fact, now, now here's another place where a lot of people get confused. Me writing this like this, right? So I just write the, the units divided. Notice that I could also write that just like this, 10 to the eighth meters over one second, right? So realize that that means the same thing. Those two mean the same thing, which, by the way, uh, meters over seconds means the same as meters times seconds to the minus one power, right? So if you see that, don't get confused by that either. Raising something to the negative power is like inverting it, right? Yes? 
Either way, any of those would be acceptable. Yep. Okay, now, now we have a conversion factor, right? Because we have meters here, we have seconds here. How am I going to put it in this equation? What do I want on the bottom? Meters, right, remember? This is almost like putting together a puzzle, right? Because I've got two potential puzzle pieces to put in here next. I've got this one, or I could put it in like this. I've basically got two pieces that might fit here. And I just decide which one fits. The one that fits is the one that's going to cancel meters. So I'm going to have 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters. And then I'm going to have one second. Now, what does that really mean? What, that's a relationship. It means for light, one second is 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters. Right? There's this direct relationship between those two things for light. When one second goes by for light, 2.998 or 3 times 10 to the 8th meters have gone by. All right. Now what I've done at this point is I have canceled meters. If I were to stop my calculation at this point, I'd have seconds. I have my answer in seconds. By the way, it's already going to be very small. You notice that? If I were to stop right here, my number's already going to be very small. So we're looking at a pretty small number for our final answer. What's my next step, you think? Because I'm not done. I didn't want my answer in seconds. I asked you for the answer in years just to make it more difficult. Machine? Minutes? OK, how would I do that? 60 seconds. Right, one minute. Notice I didn't write 1m, because that would mean one meter. One minute over 60 seconds. Anybody want to tell me the next one? What's going to go on the bottom? Minutes, right? Jesse, what's going to go on the top? One hour. OK, yeah, let's go to one hour. 60 minutes. All right, and now what's the next one? Somebody raise a hand. Rebecca? Days. One day over 24 hours. Next. Yes. 365 days. We could get a little more precise with that if we wanted, but we've only got three sig figs here anyway, so I'm just going to leave it like that. There it is. Now watch what happens to our units. We canceled seconds here. We canceled minutes with this one. Here we canceled hours. Here we canceled days. And we have years as our final answer. I'm going to put this into my calculator as just a long string. So I'm typing in 3.25 divided by 10 to the sixth, or a million, divided by 2.998. And I'm using the double E button to the eighth, divided by 60, divided by 60, divided by 24, divided by 365 and with three significant digits I get 3.44 times 10 to the minus 22 years. See how pretty that is? Now so here's the thing all right the factor label method sure you can substitute you can just do a bunch of those little ratio and proportion things and you'd have to do one two three four five six six of them in this case, right? You can do that, but this is just, factor label method provides such a, a neat, efficient way of really accounting for all of your units and conversions, all right? Which is why uh, the physicists like to call this method dimensional analysis, because what you're really doing is you're analyzing the dimensions or the units. Now, most of the problems you have won't have this many steps. On a test, we'll try to keep it to three or four max conversions. But you still don't want to be doing a bunch of those this over this equals x over this. All right? 
this way it just provides a really neat way because now look I can just check everything here what do I want to check there's two main things I want to check when I'm done with this first of all of course make sure your units at the end are correct because if they're not then you obviously have the wrong answer the other thing you want to make sure is that on each conversion factor make sure that the numerator is the same as the denominator the numerator equals the denominator one of the most common mistakes is that students would switch these two numbers see what I'm saying so you might write 10 to the 6 meters over 1 micrometer so be careful of that error make sure that you've written those in the right orientation and that what's on the top equals what's on the bottom and then as long as you punch it in your calculator correctly you should have the right answer all right now that was a pretty complicated one and I just wanted to show you kind of the power of the factor label method and what it what it can do for you let me do one that's a little bit a little bit simpler just to kind of re-emphasize the technique that that you can use for doing this let's say I'm gonna start with 3.25 micrometers this time but this time instead of converting all the way to something like uh, the distance light will travel in so many years I'm gonna keep it to just two conversion factors so I'm gonna say let's convert this into feet Um, actually, you know what? Let's do inches. Sorry. So I want to convert this into inches, which is going to be more than two conversion factors, but that's all right. So 3.25 micrometers. Sometimes it's helpful if you want, go ahead and write over here inches after an equal sign so that that way I'm keeping in mind what my goal is right so my goal is inches that's where I'm trying to get to and I'm trying to get there from micrometers now I just proceed like I showed you before I've got I want to have micrometers in the denominator I know that so that's automatic right every time you want this kind of diagonal relationship where the same units are in the denominator of the next factor and now is going to be a little tricky because I don't actually know a conversion right between micrometers and inches, right? And you might think, oh, I know the centimeter to inch relationship, right? It's 2.54 centimeters is one inch. So it'd be nice if I could go right to centimeters. And that might be tempting. Be careful doing that. You might be able to do that in your head and figure out how many micrometers in a centimeter. It's much safer to first go to meters. Right? Yes? Um, well, let's see if that's what ends up happening. Can we just multiply, multiply 2.54 by however many units are between micrometer and centimeter. Let's, let's look at what happens and we'll revisit that answer. Let's look at what happens when we do this. I've got one meter over 10 to the 6 micrometers, right? So now again, what am I going to do in this next one? I've got, I'm going to want to have meters down here. Now, just to reiterate, why did I go to meters instead of trying to go right to centimeters? The reason is I don't know in my head, I don't know right off the top of my head, how many micrometers there are in a centimeter. I'd have to do a calculation in my head. You could do that, but there's always the risk of, of making an error on that one, and it's harder to check your work at the end. All right? Good chance of making an error, not easy to check your work. So I'm going to go to meters because I know that relationship. It's 10 to the 6 micrometers in a meter. Now that means I'm going to have to have an extra step though because I still have to get to centimeters because this right here is my link to inches. That's my only link to inches, right? So I'm going to put meters here and I'm going to put centimeters up here. And now I know this relationship is 100 to 1. I, 
could have written 1 over 0 0.01, right? However you want to write it, as long as it's true. As long as that ratio is true, then it's fine. Now this would cancel out micrometers and meters, right? And then, now I'm ready for the final step. Which is that, and that will cancel centimeters for me. Let's pull up the magic calculator for this. Because um, a lot of people get confused working with fractions, right? So how am going to put this in my calculator? I just write 3.25 divided by 10 to the 6, so 1 times, whoops, sorry. Divided by 10 to the 6 times 100 divided by 2.54. with me? Enter. Does this make sense? That's small. 1.27952755 times 10 to the minus 4. We've only got three sig figs here. Notice this does not limit our sig figs because this is an exact relationship. It's definition. This is true by definition and therefore it's exact Okay, same thing with this one. And same thing with this one now. None of those limit our sig figs. So I've got 1.28 times 10 to the minus 4. 1.28 times 10 to the minus 4 inches. Now, the last thing you want to do, I think, well, maybe not the last, but when you're done with this, take a quick look at your answer and ask yourself if it makes sense. Am I in the ballpark? In other words, if you come out with 1.28 times 10 to the fourth power, you're not in the ballpark. Ask if it makes sense. Does it make sense that there'd be this small number of inches in 3.25 micrometers? Yes. All right? If I got 10 to the fourth, I'd say, no, that doesn't make sense. Then you can go through the steps here. You can, you can do that quick check on whether you're in the ballpark. Is it, should this be very large or very small? Then you can just check, make sure your conversion factors are each correct. Make sure you got the right units. And you should be all set. Usually if your units are right at the end, you're going to be correct. Um, of course, it's not always true. You could have you could have mixed up the numbers in one of your conversion factors, or you could have punched in your calculator incorrectly, right? But definitely, if your units are wrong, then you're probably wrong. And always show your units. Any questions on that? Before you try it? on your own.